Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go through the two different methods of graphic representation that you need to know about. Um, these are both uh, different approaches to storing different types of graphics that you might encounter. One of them you will definitely be very familiar with because you'll use them a lot. Um, the other one you likely seen but didn't know it was a different thing. Okay. Um, so graphics are the visual parts of your system, the stuff that you see on the screen. Uh, and it's important really to understand the way that your screen works before we start talking about these. Screens are made up of lots of individual squares of color. Uh, that can be adjusted by the computer to create images. Um, it works in a similar way to what you might have seen as pointillism uh, in art, where there's a you know, you've got a, like a painting that's made up of lots of dots, but you see it from far enough away, the colours all blend together, and what you see is the overall image. It works exactly the same way as as that, um, just through a, through your screens. Uh, the dots themselves they aren't like microscopically small or anything. You can see them if you just put your face right up to the computer. Right? You will be able to see the colors, uh, see the, the different boxes. Um, but when you see them from far enough away, you see the overall image. So each of the colored squares on the image is called a pixel, right? which is short for picture element. Um, and there's different ways that we can create graphics within a system that use uh, that use the pixels in, in order to cre uh, recreate an image. Um, so the first one is called bitmap graphics. So in this example, uh, this is a very simple example, um, the way that a bitmap works is that the, colored, uh, the, the colors for each pixel within the image are stored in binary. Okay? For a black and white graphic, and I mean literally black and white here, um, it would just take one bit of data per pixel, and you were just creating a map of, you know, is the pixel black or is it white? Okay, and then the binary data is then just stored for that. Okay, uh, this is where the term bitmap comes from. It is a map of the bits that make up the image. Um, for a more complex image, um, you can increase the resolution. So the more pixels that there are within the graphic, the higher quality image that you can create. It's much clearer, much more detailed. Even in these simple graphics, where you've got like eight, uh, an eight by eight image or a sixteen by sixteen image, you can see the increase in the quality in in the clarity of the these very simple faces. Okay. Um, the slightly more complicated element comes in when we start talking about color, right? So black and white can be done with one bit per uh, per pixel. Um, because it only gives you two options, you can have a zero or one. Um, an eight bit color depth, uh, the color depth of the image is then uh, how many bits of data you use per pixel. Okay, so an eight bit color depth would give you 256 colors, right? Because an eight bit number can be zero to 255. Um, which sounds like a reasonable amount, but actually, in terms of real world colors, your eye can distinguish between about 12 million colors. So 256 is nothing, right? Um, we need higher color depths to be able to recreate real world images, right? 8 bit is good if you're doing things like logos um, or icons. For example, this one, it's only got two colors in it, right? So 256 would be a fine amount to use to store that graphic. Uh, your photographs, on the other hand, so this is one of uh, a carousel horse um, if we stored that as an 8-bit color 8-bit uh, color graphic it would come out looking a bit more like that okay so you lose a lot of quality a lot of definition uh, particularly around places where there's lots of kind of light and shadow okay and you get these kind of blocky effects right so rubbish for photographs okay? but perfectly fine for uh, a logo or an icon 16-bit um, color depth would be the next one up um, this will allow you about 65,000 colors per, for each pixel. Uh, this one actually gives you a really decent range of colors. Um, and the files don't get too big because it's only two bytes per pixel. This is what you most likely have seen. So most images that you use online um, will use a 16-bit color depth. Okay. It's, however, 
uh, not great if you're wanting to use like like photographer quality um, photographs. It's fine for over uh, for transferring files online because like the devices that you view these files on they're not particularly big. They don't need to be high quality graphics. Uh, if you want a proper high quality graphic, you are looking into much higher ones like 24-bit or 32-bit color. 24-bit uh, is also commonly termed true color um, because there are over 16 million possible colors available in this system. Um, your eye can only actually distinguish between about 12 million um, and that gives you uh, plenty of colors to be able uh, to work with. Um, it works out to be about three, well it works out to be exactly three bytes of data per pixel. Okay, So in terms of file size you are using three times as much as if you were using an 8-bit photograph but you are getting a significant increase in the quality of the image that you're storing. Okay, The idea of three is actually quite important for this. Um, the three bytes each represent your different colors. Okay, So your primary colors um, in terms of light are red, green and blue or RGB um, and each color basically is one byte of data. Right, so how much red is in the color, how much green, how much blue. And this actually then links into the way that things like your screens work. Okay? So each of the pixels will often be made up of three, um, three different colored lights, a red one, a green one, a blue one, and the color is basically just turning these brighter or dimmer based on the values of the binary data. Okay? Um, you might have seen something like this, uh, where you can actually see what the different values are for a specific color. So this particular shade of teal uh, is 50 red, 213 green, and 180 blue. Right, will give you that color. Okay. Um, this gives you a lot of control over how uh, what your graphics look like. You can control down to the tiniest detail how uh, the exact color that you're going to get out. Okay. But on the downside, it means that the files are significantly larger. Okay. Uh, so this isn't great when you're working online because it means that it actually takes longer to transfer. It uses up more data to send the image to somebody. Okay. So uh, most online files tend to fall into the 16-bit range, just to keep things nice and workable. Okay. Um, generally, just a, a good measure is that if you're wanting more color or, or higher resolution, it means you're going to end up with larger files. Okay, So higher resolution gets you more detail, a higher color depth gets you uh, smoother color transitions, a much kind of greater uh, depth of color, um, but both of these things will increase the size of the files. Higher resolution, there's more pixels to store. A higher color depth, there's more data for every pixel that you're trying to store. So these files end up quite large. Um, the other way that we can store graphics is a thing called a vector. Okay. So vector graphics uh, are a bit more complicated than bitmaps okay, in terms of what actually gets stored. Bitmap graphics are really straightforward. right? It's drawing the color of the pixel that is going to appear on the screen. Vector graphics aren't stored like that. They ignore the fact that the pixels are there at all. Um, the way that a vector graphic is stored is a collection of the shapes and the and the attributes of those shapes that we're going to make up the graphic. So it's not storing uh, just how to draw it. It's storing a, des storing a description of the shapes that combine to make that graphic. Okay. Um, so for example, this guy, okay, he is made up of many different shapes. Okay. We've got some ellipses around his eyes, um, a slightly deformed triangle here for the mouth, rectangles for the legs, a line for the part between his legs, and lots of different polygon shapes. Okay, So the file for this would be stored as a collection of that information. right? So it's, for example, for his pupil, it's, it's a black ellipse. It is in the coordinates uh, that would place it here. Um, it doesn't have an outline. It has a fill color of black. Okay, and it's a description of all the objects that go into making up this graphic. Okay, starting with the ones furthest back and stacking them forwards to create this image. Okay, your basic shapes that you'll end up with are rectangles, ellipses, 
uh, lines and polygons. Polygon is any irregular shape that's not a rectangle or an ellipse. Um, and the types of attributes you store are things like the coordinates within the image, um, the fill color, the line color, uh, if there's any other filter effects, if there's um, kind of rotational effects going on, um, as well as things like, like drop shadows, there's a shadow being placed on here. And as well as that, it will store their position within uh, the stack, right? So whether they're at the top or at the back. Okay. And so with this description, when this file is being opened by the computer, it can just redraw it. It draws all the shapes one after the other to draw up the image. Okay. Vector graphics work well for um, computer graphics. Okay, You can't store uh, photographs this way. Photographs are way too complicated. Right? So this is for simple, kind of cartoony type computer graphics, like icons. Um, they're really useful uh, for, for digital editing um, because they have this thing called resolution independence. Because the file is stored ignoring the fact that pixels are a thing, um, you can resize them to any scale that you like. Right? And you don't get that kind of blurry, fuzzy edge that you get if you resize a photograph. Okay, Because if you change the size of the image, it just redraws all the shapes at a different size and you get a perfect edge every single time. Um, they're really easy to edit because they're made up of separate shapes. You can just move the shapes around. Um, you can delete them. You can add more very easily. Right? Bitmap graphics, on the other hand, are more difficult to do. You need a fairly complex piece of software to be able to move stuff around in a bitmap graphic. But as I said, they, they cannot be used to store photographs. Photographs are way too complicated. 